Hello everybody, welcome to Drive and Strive. Today, we are going over OBD2 code reading. Uh, this video is actually suggested by one of my friends. Um, uh, I hope this video turns out okay. I'm still adjusting the video resolutions. Um, so I hope it turns out alright. Um, but let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, OBD2 code, OBD2, uh, uh, ports of or code or code reading is uh has been mandatory since January first, nineteen ninety six. Um. Uh, in all manufactured car in all manufactured cars, uh, in the U S. Um. Uh, according to Google, anyway, that is. Um, there's several different types of ports. Uh, there's gonna be one certain port I'm gonna show you here in a minute. Um, but there's, there's all sorts of different style ports that would go across several different types of vehicles. Um, there's also different types of scanners. Now, OBD2, you, OBD2 uh, you don't want to get confused with OBD1, because that's completely different. You have to have a different scanner for that, and codes uh, are pretty much the same, just a few different ones. Uh, the codes that your code reader would tell you also vary between different vehicle manufacturers uh, such as GM they have their own specific uh, 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 gosh dang it uh, <laughs> they have their own specific uh, trouble codes and uh, so does Ford Ford has their own specific ones and so on and so forth uh, so you just wanna so the codes will be different um, for this specific code reader that I have I believe this is a uh, Con We. I believe that's how you pronounce that name. I'm not sure. Uh, I'll leave a link to this one down below. I got this for about forty-eight bucks uh, last Black Friday. Um, it's really nice. It's got the basic OVD two port right there. Like I said, there's all sorts of different sized ones and different shapes and stuff. There's some circular ones and like BMWs and different stuff like that. But it's a very, very nice scanner. Okay, guys, so um, on most American cars, whether it's a Ford or a GM or whatever, uh, usually the OBD2 port will be right underneath the, the driver's side dash kick panel here. Now, sometimes they'll be over on this side here. Sometimes they'll be over here, which on this specific vehicle, it's right here. That's what it looks like right there. Okay. On some other vehicles, there's gonna be there'll be a little cover on the, on here that you have to pull off so you can clip it into it. Now, as you can see, this this plug here will match up down here because you're gonna have an angled side on each side. That that's how you know that this plug can only go on there one specific way. So I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to hook up this uh, plug to my code reader and I'll uh, plug it into the car and I'll show you guys what to do next. Alright guys, so like I said, the code reader that I have is a Conwe KW808. This is an OBD2 code reader. It's uh, very nice. It's got a nice rubber protective uh, case over the side of it. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your, your plug here. You know, reach underneath the dash. If you've never done this before, you you want to make sure that you look so you don't mess up any of the pins. But I've done this before, so I know exactly what it is. This one runs on the car's power, so as soon as you plug it in, that's going to come up. You're going to go to Enter. Now, for this specific one, you have a DTC lookup. That's going to be a code. So if you don't know what a specific code is, you can type it in with the P and all the different, and all the four, uh, with the four other codes there. Uh, you can view different data and everything else here, but we're not gonna worry about that today. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit diagnostics and you're gonna put your, the key in the car. Now you can either start the car or you can just put it in the run position. Now uh, this, for uh, demonstration purposes, I'm not gonna start the car because it'll be kind of loud. Um, so I'm just gonna turn, put the car in the on position. That would be one turn before the car actually starts. So what's happening right now is the code reader is linking to this vehicle, and this came up. You, you don't want to you don't want to erase period, restore data. 
Okay, so we're gonna hit no. And it's, it gives you a list of codes, monitors, uh, not that don't work and are okay and everything like that. You got different control modules that you can enter into. I usually just go to this first one, 07E8. Okay, then you can go to read codes. You can go to your stored codes, if there's any code, code stored, and there's none currently. And, or you can go to pending codes. And as you can see here, I got code P0300. It's a random multiple cylinder misfire detected. Okay, I got another one here. P2195. O2 sensor signal, bias, stuck, lean, bank 1, sensor 1. Now, if you had a code, had a code uh, reader that did not tell you what the code exactly is and just said this number, you can easily look that up on Google and type in your vehicle manufacturer. In this case, it would be a Mazda, which is manufactured by Ford. So this specific code would take you to this. Okay, and a lot of times you'll also be able to find when you look this up causes of this code as well. But with this specific code reader, it tells me what it is, so I don't need to do that. If I forgot what this what this is, and I just had this code written down, like I said, I can go to that DC DTC lookup at, at whenever this thing opens or it turns on, and I could look that up, and it would tell me exactly what it is. Now you can also erase the codes in this vehicle. Now, I want to keep these codes on here, so I'm not actually going to do this. What you would do is you'd hit, you'd click this here, and it would ask you if you wanted to erase the codes on this vehicle. And if you wanted to erase them, you'd hit yes, and if you didn't, you would hit no, you'd hit no. And I, you just use these arrows down here and enter to select and escape to uh, deselect. You've got a help button here, and you can turn this thing off. Now, another thing that you can do with OBD2 leaders, uh, on some of them anyway, you can go to live data. That will make it to where you can read different sensors and uh, all sorts of different stuff on this vehicle. But we'll get into that on a later date because um, that's just a whole other thing to go through. You can test your O2 uh, sensors um, to see if they're working properly or not. Um, you can test all sorts of different stuff on here, like I said. Component test. You can look up your vehicle info. Uh, when you go right down here to mod module, yeah, modules present, <laughs> um, that'll just take it to a different thing that you can, uh, um, it'll just sh uh, show the other module that you can select to find stuff. And then unit of measure, whether you're in the United States or elsewhere, or whether you want to use metric measurements or uh, standard measurements, uh, you can change it there. Um, anyway. That's pretty much the basics here. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to go back. You're going to turn the car off, pull the key out, reach down here. You're going to unplug it. Like there, like that, right there. Okay. There we go. That was pretty pretty easy. Um, it, this was definitely a uh, very good investment on my part because I've used this thing a lot. Um, and it's, it's just a very handy thing to have in the first place. Um, Walmart does also sell, uh, a $35 option. It's not as nice as this. Uh, you can find them at uh, auto parts stores as well, the cheaper version of this. Um, or if you don't want to invest in one of these, you can always take your vehicle to your, uh, Auto, auto park supply store or whatever, such as O'Reilly's or AutoZone, and they do t t uh, test your vehicle for free. Um, uh, for us, sometimes it's just where you're, you can't drive your vehicle in, so you won't be able to uh, get the vehicle to them in order to check the codes because it can't be driven. So it was just a wise uh, investment for me so I can check the codes here in my driveway and I don't have to go into town and get the code reader and uh, have them test for me. Um, so I will leave a link to this one as well as another option that uh, I was looking at a long time ago. So like I said guys, OBD2 reading, uh, it's it's pretty simple. Um, I've, I haven't been doing it for too terribly long. Uh, like I said, it was suggested by one of my friends to do this video. Um, there's several different options that you can do. 
several different things that you can test with one of these. Um, it's just come in really, really handy, and it's great for diagnosing problems on vehicles as well. Um, but there's several different options. You don't have to get one of the crazy expensive $1,000, $2,000 OBD2 code readers, to, especially if you don't have that type of money like I don't. So I just went and bought a cheaper version of it, and it works just fine for my purposes. Now, if I were to be doing this like every day, full-time job, maybe maybe I'd invest in a, in a nice one. But you don't really need to invest in a very nice one if you're just a at-home mechanic, uh, working as a, doing this as a hobby, like what I'm doing. So you really don't need to uh, get one of the really big, fancy OBD2 code readers. Now, it, this one wasn't a real strain on the, uh, the wallet, um, uh, so it was, it was a nice investment for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you guys were able to learn something from uh, me going through the OBD2 code reading process. Uh, let me know down below if you guys want to see a video on OBD1 code reading, which is a completely different subject. Um, but this, this this video was very fun for, for me, um, just because I don't really get a chance to explain this to people. Um, even though I don't know a whole lot about this. Um, but it, it was very fun, very simple, very easy. Lots of different options out there for you. And uh, this will come in handy on several different cars. Um, whether you want to just check the code uh, or whatever. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is in your dash, uh, the check engine light will pop up. It'll be a, a yellow either service engine soon light or it'll just be a yellow engine in general. That'll tell you that a code popped up or there's just something wrong with your vehicle. Um, that's when I really know that I need to pull out my code reader and uh, check this out. So, uh, that's just another little bit there uh, that I forgot to mention. But, hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you guys go follow me on Instagram at Drive and Strive. If you guys want to learn how, uh, uh, if you guys want to learn what I'm doing before I uh, upload a video on YouTube. Um, and I hope you guys will subscribe to this channel and uh, come back. Maybe learn something new, um, or maybe just see some projects that I'm going to be working on here soon. And uh, just uh, all together have a really good time, maybe have some laughs along the way. So, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time here on Drive and Strive.